Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Dr. Joey interviews Christian business professionals just like you to discover their secrets for working faith positive in a negative world. Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett. Faith Positive Nation, do you work with a millennial you know, somebody born, somebody younger than you, right? Uh, or somebody who's born in the age of my daughters. But I didn't say that out loud, right? Because <laughs> I look younger than that, right? Lie to me, Zach. Thank you, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Uh, if you work with a millennial, you know that maybe they work, you know, they work a little bit differently than you do. And in fact, I'm kind of tired of reading about, you know, what uh, what the deficits are, the weaknesses are of the millennial generation. because. I'm super excited about millennials. Now, granted, my two daughters are millennials. One just got married, another's about to marry. And let, let me tell you, these four young people are ready to set the world on fire. They're high speed, high caliber, passionate people. But most of the public uh, information that's disseminated about this generation just doesn't see them in a very positive light. Well, you know, we're all about positivity here in Faith Positive Nation. And so today, I want to introduce you to a new friend of mine who understands millennials, who knows how to attract millennials to his business and who grows and develops them so that when the time does come for them to leave his business, not only are they better off, they're business owners of their own. Is that incredible or what? So let me introduce you to my new friend, Zach Thomas. Zach and I visited recently when I was down with Perry Rood, Faith Positive Atlanta. It's a part of that growing community of Christian business professionals down there who want to increase their faith with greater joy at work so they love God and others more. Zach, in case you can't see, his shirt is a Chick-fil-A operator, and uh, we love some Chick-fil-A. So, uh, yeah, we do. Great sandwich. Uh, the original chicken sandwich. Am I right? Absolutely. Yeah, right. So, Zach uh, is currently at Macklin Crossing there in Medi- Marietta, which is a suburb of Atlanta, but everything's a suburb of Atlanta, right? If Correct. you're in Georgia, you're a suburb. Of- <laughs> Technically, even Rockmart is. That's right. That's right. And he's moving from Marietta at Macklin Crossing up to Rockmart, which is just a few minutes from where he lives with his beautiful wife, and you got six, count them, six children. And they have a farm. Zach's got a tractor. I've got a tractor. So it was love at first bite for right. us, right? <laughs> Faith Positive Nation, help me welcome to the podcast today, Zach Thomas. Zach, welcome, man. It's great to be here and an honor. Thank you very much. Uh, the honor and the privilege is ours. We met over uh, a cup of great Chick-fil-A coffee and the yogurt parfait. I like the berries with the granola. So thanks for that. Uh, that was awesome. It was my pleasure. Yeah, that's great. So Perry Rue introduced us um, after about a three hour conversation with Perry uh, that you had. Perry came to me. He said, Dr. Joe, you've got to meet Zach Thomas. So it's really cool today to have you on the podcast, man. Know you to be a man of faith. Um, you lead your family with faith. Uh, but I really want to hone in on your daily work because it's incredible what you're doing with millennials through your Chick-fil-A restaurant there. So tell us a little bit about what your typical day looks like. Sure. Well, one one of the things being a a franchisee of Chick-fil-A, but in the quick service industry, one of the things I realized is that we're, we have to hire millennials whether we like it or not. You know, that's, that's really their first job. Um, Mm. Now we're calling centennials. But I think one of, the, one of the things that we are able to see is something before the rest of the world is able to see it. And so going back to what you said earlier and we talked about uh, a week ago when we met, it's just the I see a positive side of millennials. I'm very excited about who they are. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that I talk about a good bit is that they're really challenging the status quo. And I think that they're going to push the envelope on what needs to really happen with business and the way that we've led businesses in the past. Mm. They're kind of forcing the hand for us to lead in a different way. Mm. So, See, that, that resonates with me so much because I'm a product of the 60s. I wasn't born in the 60s, but I'm a product of the 60s. And that's what that whole decade and on into the 70s was about, man. We were challenging institutions and traditions that shifted culture. And I see the millennial generation doing that same thing. 
absolutely it's happening again and i think it's great and i think that um you know for myself as you can see on the wall in the background i'm i'm from the military spent a lot of time in the military and was an airborne ranger in the army and so you know i have that dna in me i can be a command and control style leader you know mm-hmm. someone that can that can get the job done and focus on results but yet these millennials they're just not going to put up with it. They don't mm. need money. They'll just go home and live in their parents' basement. And so, you know, it's like <laughs> congratulations. Not up. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm not going to put up with with the uh, with people treating me um, badly. And so, I'm looking for a place where I can be treated with honor, dignity, and respect, mm. and a place where I feel like I can make a difference. So, you know, it's not just about the money. And, right. um, and so they, they want to join a cause, you know, they want to join right. uh, something bigger than themselves. And then on top of that, you know, if you can create an environment, if you can create that value proposition to them that says, Hey, you know, I see that there's an opportunity here to help grow and develop you and help mm. you get to where you want to be in life. And they're actually going to be attracted to you. And, and in terms of being able to, to recruit, you know, we talk about, it's really hard. It's like the war on talent. That's, that's what we're calling it inside of Chick-fil-A. Mm. But, you know, I, I see that there's people just wanting to come work for me because of the, the value proposition that I'm putting out there, that it's about them, mm. not about them just coming and helping me run my business, yeah. it's about me helping them get to where they want to be. And then in turn, they actually leave a trail of high performance in my organization long after they leave. Mm, yeah, and really determine the culture there. So it's not about you selling more chicken sandwiches. Absolutely. It's about you growing people by selling more chicken sandwiches. Absolutely, yeah. And I, I, I wrote a book about it. Oh, no, you didn't. You did. Hold it up again. We want to see that. Yeah. So I, call it, I call it leader farming. Uh-huh. And, um, it's literally growing leaders to grow your business. And growing leaders to grow your business. Okay. Absolutely. So, you know, you think about, I'm a results oriented person. Yeah. Cause you jumped out of airplanes, right? Yeah, I mean, you got the crazy gene. You jump out of airplanes. The absolutely. result better be you land safely on the ground. Right, man. I'm very results driven. <laughs> yeah. But if I actually change the result that I'm focused on mm. being development of people, Mm-hmm. That's my result. Mm. In producing leaders, that's my result. You know, if I'm focused on the bottom line, the sales number and all that, then that's that's great. But then I'm actually not developing people in most cases. I'm mm-hmm. focused on something else. Yeah, but, people are a tool to grow your bottom line at that point. So you just use them up correct. when you get done with this one, you kick them out the door. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Man, but, so here's what's going through my head right now. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things will be added to you, right? Absolutely. You're seeking first the kingdom of God with these millennials, aren't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. Tell me how your faith informs that. You know, I'll tell you, Dr. Joey, my faith, um, I I wish we had a much longer time. I could give my entire testimony, but I'll give you the very short version and when I left um, active duty army, I felt called to ministry mm. and um, went on staff at a church as a college and singles pastor. Okay. Started going to seminary. And while in seminary, I started a coffee company um, called Ranger Coffee Company. We literally sold coffee all over the world. Mm. And I, I learned in that process, there's two things. One, I learned that I, I loved being an entrepreneur. I loved business. Mm. Uh, but I also learned being a college pastor that I loved working with young people and mentoring and developing young people. And so when the economy kind of crashed in 2008 and people stopped buying expensive coffee for a while, I, um, I started looking at other opportunities and a Chick-fil-A opportunity presented itself through uh, a friend and I'd read a mm-hmm. book and uh, read mm-hmm. this book and, and just started really looking into that opportunity more and, um, started pursuing it and, and got selected pretty quickly uh, to be a franchisee. And mm. it's been, it's been an incredible experience, you know? And so I came into this from um, having been called to the ministry and my definition of ministry because of what everyone else was telling me mm. was you've got to work in a church mm. and 
along the way, God began to show me, Hey, that's not exactly what I want you to do. Wow. And to the point where I actually quit seminary, not once, but twice. Um, what, they wouldn't let you go the first time you said no? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Everybody came back and said, you know, well, you can't quit seminary. You can't quit the ministry. And they know, like, they oh, knew well, more about God's divine design for you than you did, absolutely. right? And I'm sure they were well-intending people. Yeah. So nothing against cemetery. I mean, seminary. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, no, no, you know, nothing against that. But no, nothing against it. It just wasn't for you. It, it wasn't God's wasn't calling on your life, and, right? And so God actually, he showed me that um, he had a different plan for me. He mm. had a plan for me to, to actually do something totally different, to be in this world, but not of this world. Mm. Somebody's knocking on my door. Oh. <laughs> okay, Chuck, we'll take a pause right here. <laughs> okay, you want to you wanna see who that is? Hello. Hi. Hey. Hi. Yes. I'm Paige. Hey. Hi. So um, I've, I'm actually on a call right okay, now. Fine. Okay, Chuck, we're back. Uh, do you remember where you were and what you were saying? I think you had just dropped the uh, cemetery, I mean, seminary kind right. of thing. But you were describing your divine design. What you were right. doing. So just to be, you know, to be in this world, but not of this world. Pick and it up that, right, pick it up right there and give us that line on, on three. Okay. Three, two, one. So that, you know, that is really what I feel like God's called me to do, uh, to be a, a minister in the workplace. And mm. you know, I'm not, um, you know, jumping on my soapbox every day and preaching a sermon behind the counter at Chick-fil-A, but <laughs> I've had opportunities where, where people have, have actually, you know, just, Hey, what, what is it about you? Something's different. Something's different, man. They notice, don't they? Right. And then that just leads into a conversation that, um, it's just so much different than, than thinking about it in a way where, you know, I've got to stand behind a pulpit and that's, right. that's the only way to minister. Right. And man, that just, uh, I'd say it sets my hair on fire, but I can't say that anymore. Um, you know, it, but it really does because you contrast what we would think of traditionally. And right. this is a perfect example of the difference between the boomer generation and millennials. You know, you think of ministry as typical pulpit ministry. You're standing behind the pulpit Sunday after Sunday. People are coming to you. Yeah. Yeah. St. Francis said, preach the gospel always. Use words when necessary. Yeah. See, man, that's what you're doing. So your pulpit is actually a Chick-fil-A counter, right? Absolutely. And Absolutely. you're working both directions. You're working your, your team and you're working the customers that come through the door and yeah. they see something different in you. And yeah. so you get to talk to people and get to share Christ's love with people yeah. that never will darken on the, you know, the doorstep of a right. traditional kind of church and, and much less talk to a pastor about what's really on their heart, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So I'm sure some of your team members, you get really close to them, don't you, Zach? Oh, absolutely. Very close to the point where you know, some of my team members consider me their father. Hmm. Hmm. Well, you already got six kids. Do you need more? Might as well. <laughs> What's six more, right? <laughs> What's 90 more? <laughs> wow. So you got a team of 90, right? Mm -hmm. Now, now you were telling me when we were together uh, down in Atlanta that you have had several of your team members who've come through your program, your talent management program, and you've Correct. developed them as leaders. You've done the leader farming thing with them. And they've gone on to become operators themselves of Chick-fil-A. Yes, yes. Wow. In fact, um, I have one in Cincinnati, Ohio, uh -huh. uh, Michael Calloway, uh, another in um, Stockton, California, her name's Erica Hartfield. And then Amara Sajid, um, we are literally going to find out on July 10th if that, uh, I, I'm, and I feel really, really good about it, but that's her final interview. And she's hopefully going to get uh, Nassau Bay, which is a new restaurant in the Houston market in Texas. Oh, and then wow. I've got another um, one, his name is Zach Ayers. He's in what we call LDP, a leadership development program for Chick-fil-A. So they kind of graduate out of the restaurant into a formalized two-year program at Chick-fil-A Inc. where they go around and travel and open new stores, grand openings. Wow. And, um, and they do interim manager type work in a mm. situation like where I'm leaving my old location mm -hmm. 
and, and going to a new location, they'll come in and run my old restaurant for, for a season. Mm, oh, sweet. To kind of create a buffer between right. the former operator and the new operator. Right. So tell me, what was the defining moment? You said you were in seminary and you realized that it wasn't a pulpit, but a Chick-fil-A counter that that was your mission field and the workplace your mission field. There had to be a defining moment when you went, Ooh, I got it, God. Well, um, I'm not sure you want me to share that on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> was it painful or something? Well, um, you know, it, it's, I was in seminary and my professor, he was, I, I believe it was Greek and okay. um, he may have been speaking in Greek. Um, but I just couldn't understand a word he was saying. And, and I just be, remember sitting there thinking, you know, God, what, what is going on? Like, what, mm. why am I here? What am I doing? Okay. And, and he just clearly like not an audible voice, but just clearly said, you know, Zach, this is not what I want you to do. And so I got up, started walking out and my professor was like, where are you going? And I'm like, I'm going home. <laughs> uh, he said, like, Gotta you, go, man. Yep. He's like, are you sick? And I'm like, no, I'm done. Yeah. Like, yeah, oh. like gone he was like no well you know he's one of those people like you can't do that you've been called to ministry and i'm like you know wow he said that oh yeah i was like i'm pretty sure i'm gonna listen to god over you so (laughs) i'm just gonna i'm gonna go ahead and go home just saying i'm headed out yeah yeah so that was that the first or the second time because you said they wouldn't let you that was the first time uh and i said well you know if i got it okay i went back home everybody said well no you've been called ministry you've got to do this um i said okay fine well if i'm gonna if i'm gonna go to seminary at least i can i can go to liberty university online and that mm-hmm. way i can just mute the professor if i don't <laughs> i don't have to listen to him and, uh, hang on now let me let me get this straight you were attracted to a university because it was online and you could mute the professor exactly that's all my friends at liberty you didn't hear that okay i told you you didn't want me to say this on the podcast <laughs> I'm going to mute the professor. I, I, I'm sure some of my students wish they could mute me sometimes. <laughs> I hope you didn't want me to say that. Oh, that's awesome, man. That is really awesome. So did you actually enroll? I did. Um, yeah. I, I was a student of Liberty for about 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I don't mean first, that. Did, first, did you... day of, first day of class. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then God just said, this is not what I want you to do. And wow. I clicked the red X in the upper corner and closed the screen out and called from there, called the school and said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm done. They're like class started today. Yeah. How how can you be gone that fast, dude? (laughs) Well, well, Scott Hicks is a friend of ours has actually been on this podcast. He's the uh, vice provost at at Liberty. I am sure he would say, Zach, you made the right decision. Do what God wants you to do. You know? I hope he would. <laughs> oh, he would, man. I know Scott's heart a lot, and uh, that's exactly what he'd say. So were there, were there things building up to you understanding that seminary wasn't for you and that your pulpit was a workplace? You know, I think that, um, you know, part of it was, and, and we probably don't want to get into this definitely on the podcast, but part okay. of it was I, I, I went to China uh, oh. on a trip. Um, spent some time um, studying and looking at the Chinese house church movement. Mm. Uh, and, and, and in the beginning, in the very beginning of this, which I just think this was, was God kind of helping me make the move that I, I was resistant to make. Mm. But in the very beginning, I became very disenfranchised with, mm. with American Christianity. And, um, and so that was really kind of the kick in the pants that I needed to, to, for him to get me on the path. Now I'm, I've, I've come back around sure, sure. A season where I was just very, very disenfranchised mm, and, mm. Uh, and just didn't want anything to do with the institutional church. Right. Hey, I get that. We hear that from a lot of people. We've had Tom Schultz from group publishing on our podcast before, and he talks about the Duns. Yep. Uh, 50 million or so of them in our country who, who have had that similar experience. And, you know, it's really interesting to me, Zach, you talk about you had to leave to come back, man, that's God's story, right? Yeah. He, he allows us to leave and then brings us back. And we've gone through that refiner's fire and become pure. So as a business owner, Chick-fil-A operator, 
What are some of the challenges you face? Every day uh, challenges are, are just the balance between loving people and getting results. You know, that is, that is wow. a thing as a business owner. It um, is. What, so what, what determines that? Because, you know, you got your task oriented guys yep. and then you got your people focused leaders. So, I mean, where's, how do, you, how do you, how do you, huh? <laughs> people focused leaders. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, really, really. Uh, well, I'm, I'm being nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> how do you, how do you know which side to kind of go towards? Yeah, you know, it's 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 hard. But what I've found is that there's, you know, there's. I talk about this in my book, but you know, the military for me, it was like a pendulum. Okay. And I swung all the way over to the far left. Yes, yeah, command and control, command top and down. Control, hard charging, you know, yep. make do push-ups so their arms fall off or they cry for their mother, you know. <laughs> or um, both. But then, yeah, both. Um, but then in the ministry, I swung the pendulum all the way over to this side uh -huh. and said, you know, hey, if you just love everybody enough, they'll do the right thing. And, that and I can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. And I became somewhat of a passive leader. Mm. And so what I found is that it's really about being in the middle and centered on this this freedom and discipline. Freedom and discipline. Okay, freedom. tell me more about that. And so it's it's freedom within a structure, within boundaries. And so, you know, in the military, we'd go out and set up a range, and I'd give my, my leaders, I was a scout platoon leader, so very uh, autonomous from the normal regimented uh, military structure in sure. a way. But we'd be able to create our own ranges, and I would say, all right, guys, here's the left limit. And here's the right limit. Anything you want to do inside of this is fine. Just don't fire outside those areas or you'll kill somebody. Mm. So, you know, that is setting those boundaries and mm -hmm. cultivating culture and, and leading and freedom. And so, you know, mm. that is, that is what leader farming is all about. It's, okay. it's that balance. You know, so many people, you know, I tell, um, I tell folks a story about my son when he was two years old, he went over to an electrical outlet that had a had a flashlight plugged into it. Uh -huh. And for those that when the power goes out, the flashlight yes. comes on automatically. Sure. And um, he went over the, to the electrical out and he began to pull it out. And at the time, he his fingers almost touched the prongs. And, wow. and I was like, oh, you know, I ran over there and I, I I grabbed him and I grabbed the flashlight out of his hand and I I I spanked his hand pretty good. And you know, in that moment, I could have said, you know, son. Let me let me explain to you how much I love you, and, and, and explain electrical theory to you, and how yeah. you know, the current could run through your body and stop your heart. And you uh -huh. no, he's two. He doesn't yeah. need that. He needs discipline, and he needs all he needs to know is if he does that again, Daddy's going to spank him. Yeah, at that moment, as yeah. a two-year-old, right? As a two-year-old, but then as he matures, if my relationship with my son stays that of fear, like if he's afraid that daddy's going to, yeah. or daddy's going to hurt him in any way. Um, when he's 18 years old, he makes a bad decision and, and he needs my help and he's going to try to hide that. And he may put himself in harm's way. Yeah. But if he knows how much I love him and if he knows how much I care about him, he can say, dad, I made a mistake. Right. I need your help. And so I feel like I want to redefine the role of leadership mm -hmm. as one of a provider and a protector. So mm. when you think about if you're the leader of a business, it's so much like being a father mm. and, and that we say and do things to try to try to protect them from hurting themselves. You know, I found myself in conversation with millennials all the time. Like, look, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> Help you think that through and yeah. how it play out. What are some other options? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So I think if we can, if if we think about ourselves as you know fathers, no no business owner thinks, oh my gosh, I, I, how can I parent you know all these people? But, yeah, but although I've had business owners refer to their employees as children many times. <laughs> yes, yeah, but. I think about the way that I balance freedom and discipline, mm. how I balance, um, you know, just that, that love and fear, you know, that fear is necessary in the beginning. Right. Right. And, and so that fear 
is is what is necessary to keep them out of trouble, to keep them from hurting themselves. Right. But long term, you know, it's all about love, and they understand that it's rooted in love. Mm, yeah, scriptures talk about a loving father disciplines his children, and that word discipline meaning to teach. So there's a protection early on, right, when you're maturing in your faith, and then there's a the provision later on. Hmm. So where does your faith come into play in terms of dealing with these challenges? Obviously, the, the freedom um, and discipline one being one of them. Um, how does your faith gain expression in loving and leading? Yeah, you know, I think that um, just in terms of expression, I just, my, my, my mantra, I guess you would say, is mm-hmm. essay quam videri, which is Latin for to be rather than to appear. To be rather than to appear. Tell me what that means to your faith. So, you know, so many people, I think, pose, you know, they, they create a, a persona yeah. and, they, you know, well, this is, this is who I am at work and this is who I am at home and this is who I am at church or, you know, whatever. And for me, it's like, I want to be the same person everywhere. Mm, and, consistent. And so many people use the excuse of, oh, well, that's work. <laughs> that's just, that's work. Mm. And that's not, you know, that's not ministry, that's work. And so, mm. you know, you can, you can be a jerk at work, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, yeah. it's all because it's work, it's excusable, right? Yeah. Almost like that sandbox is filled with jerks already. So what's yeah. one more jerk right. that goes back to your working in the world and of the world, right? That's what that model is. You, or not of, yeah. Right. Yeah. You're conformed to the world right. rather than being the transformer of the world. Right. Yeah, what's one more jerk? So yeah, so the way it plays out is just refusing to be of the world. Mm. I refuse it. I'm not going to do it. How do you back that up, man? Because it's so hard to be consistent, and so many people are one way at work, and then I mean, you wouldn't even know the person on Sunday if you went into their place of business. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I think honestly, I mean, this is probably way beyond the scope of this podcast, but it go it just it goes back to identity. You know, mm. goes back to identity and are people leading out of their woundedness? Are they leading out of healing? You know, mm. and, and what and, does that mean? It, it goes back to identity. Well, I mean, what is, what is their identity? Are they, are they leading out of their false self? Are mm. they, you know, they've created, I think that, you know, you, you look at our identity and our, who we were born to be like mm. this, this is the beginning. This is who we're born to be. Right. Our identity in Christ and then we create this this false self, this person that mm. actually exists for the sole purpose of protecting this person because this person, you know, can't protect themselves. And then we create this false persona. You know, it's part of the reason why you know, all that stuff is is on the wall back there. You know, mm. it mm. was it was you know I understand that now, but to me it was you know I I was going to prove to the world that I was tough, you know, Yeah, the biggest, baddest, 10 foot tall and bulletproof, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and so, but then, you know, having gone through that, right. Part of who I am and it's part of what God took me through. And mm-hmm. so now I'm in a role of essentially like kingship, you know, it's like almost the son, the prince and the king, you know, the, the mm-hmm. prince that, you know, you know how a prince can be, right? And so, um, I've read about it. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, but that the kingship is what we're called to be in the workplace and to be yes. that. King. And my friend Rob that I just met with, he uh, and Bing Oliver, which is is another close friend of mine. Uh-huh. Uh, we have a group of men that get together, and and the and Rob really kind of started this this helping us understand like as a person who we were and and our the son and the prince and the king and all that came mm. out of our conversations with each other. Mm. I give them the credit for it, but it just really helps you understand what I mean by, you know, that uh, false self and, and, and what we've created as a persona to, to be tough or, you right. know, be someone that we're really not and not being our true identity, mm. to be a son, you know, to live in sonship and and to live out of that and so i think that you know most of the time when people actually act a certain way at work it's it's really insecurity it's yeah it's, it's that not, sense of woundedness that they're it, acting out of 
It's, it's woundedness. It's, it's leading out of their woundedness versus leading out of their true identity. Yeah. Which is as a son and daughter of God, Mm -hmm. man, you reminded me so much of one of my favorite books, wild at heart by John Eldridge. Um, Absolutely. John is a, I won't say John is a friend of mine because I don't know John that well, but Uh uh, but Bart Hansen, which is on the team there, uh, Morgan Snyder, which is on the team there. Um, we're, we're, I'm pretty close with both of them yeah. and was fairly close with Craig before he passed away. Mm. I try to steer clear of John because you know, he's the rock star. And but I, <laughs> I, I go out, I go out to Colorado at least once a year. In fact, mm. I'm, going, I'm going in August again, okay. cool. with the team and I take guys out there. Okay. To the wild at heart. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's great. So if you haven't read the book, it's wild at heart by John Eldridge. And then he and his wife wrote a book called captivating and that's about women. Yes. Um, so we men are really afraid of our woundedness so much so that we put up as you're talking about this false identity as posers, yeah. um, rather than seeing ourselves as forgiven. Right. Yeah. I mean, God, and sons can, and daughters. yes, sons and daughters who are healed. Mm-hmm. forgiven grace mercy and once you once you get over yourself you know and really accept that grace that that we we don't have to be god we can just be sons and daughters right. of the heavenly father then it all gets a lot easier right absolutely and, and it lowers that jerk at work factor right? absolutely yeah yeah okay man i know we could talk for a long time i'm aware of the time and you've been so generous with the gift of your time and wisdom today i love your heart and, and I love what you're talking about. Hold up your book again there for us. Sure. Leader Farming. Okay. And if it's not out right now, it will be shortly. And so in the episode copy, we're going to uh, promote the book. We're going to give you a link to go to uh, to get the book uh, to uh, Zach's website also, uh, which we, is in the episode copy. No need to worry about writing it down now if you're listening to this on iTunes. Um, we don't want you falling off the treadmill. So uh, just take it easy. Look at the episode copy there. Faith Positive Nation always wants to know, Zach, about a favorite Bible verse. And I know you've got a lot of them. Yeah, and, and I know that, you know, there are a lot of books in the Bible. <laughs> so, and I know it's hard to choose. <laughs> oh, I've got it. I'm, I'm ready when you are. Oh, man, lay it on me and tell me why. So Proverbs 16, 9, in his heart man plans his ways, but the Lord determines his steps. The Lord determines his steps. Why is that your favorite? You know, that was the verse that the pastor shared with me when I was going through so much confusion about being called to the ministry versus something else. And it just in that crucial moment of time, um, his name is Bill Shorey, um, pastor at Morningside Baptist Church. He said, Zach, you know, Proverbs, I, and I'm sure I'd read it before and heard it. Oh, before. sure, sure. In that moment, it was the verse that I needed to hear. Yeah, it got real, didn't it? Right. And so as leaders, as results driven leaders, you know, it's kind of like, I I want to, I want to set goals and I want to, you know, accomplish things and all this, but it's like, what I've learned to do is I, yes, I set goals. Yes. I work towards that, but I hold them loosely. You know, mm. it's like, here, here are my goals. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this with my goals. It's like, here's my goals. So Proverbs 69 in his heart, man plans his ways but the Lord determines the steps. So God, if you want to, you know, this is what I've come up with, but if you want to take it and do something else with it, mm. go for it. And mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's God does know a little bit more about what's good for us than we do. Right. Absolutely. A little bit more. Yeah. I think Isaiah was said his ways are higher and his thoughts are higher. That's and right. you're also reminding me of the garden of Gethsemane, you know, Jesus fully human, fully divine says, Hey, with you, all things are possible. If it, take this cup from yeah. me, you know, yeah. if you will, but it's not about what I will. It's what you will. Right. Absolutely. So when you fall in love with your plan, it's your plan, right? Yeah. yeah. So instead of taking yourself so seriously, take God seriously and Absolutely. just take yourself a lot less seriously, man. I love you. Thank you so much for being on faith positive radio today. Somebody's going to want to reach out to you. Is there a best email address? So they can go to uh, just leaderfarming.com, which is the website. And then there's, okay. a, there's a contact form on there that comes to me. Okay. Um, but as far as my email, it's just Zach at leaderfarming.com. Zach at leaderfarming.com. Okay. That's in the episode copy also. 
Zach, thanks for the gift of your time today, man. I, I just pray that everything you put your hands to and all the people that you're growing and developing will just continue to sense the movement of God's love in your heart and in their lives. And thanks so much for the difference you're making in so many people's lives. We pray God's blessings on you, your lovely wife, and upon those six great kids and upon the muscadine and scuppin' on grapes growing out on your farm and sure. <laughs> everything else, the goats and all like that you got going on, man. Thanks so much for the gift of your time today. My pleasure. Thanks so much. Thanks for listening to Faith Positive Radio, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Suggest guests and ask questions when you email Dr. Joey at info at getpositive.today. And be sure to get your free gift of the five positive business conversations to have today. Coaching program at getpositive.today. Until next time, may God bless you with everything your heart can hope for and more than your mind can imagine.